Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Yeah. So the question I asked you. I have to leave. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bye, bro. Take care, bro. Salam. So yeah, this is quite. I think it's a question many people ask. What will happen to me after I die? What would you say? You said. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If you live a good enough life in in this dunya, like I said. Yeah, but who decides that? Yourself. When you're dead, you don't get to decide. No. But that's <laughs> so it doesn't matter. You know, I was I was dead for many years before I was alive. How do you know that? I mean, I wasn't on this planet before I came on. How do you know that? I have. Again, again, speculation. All that, no, I mean, all I know is my consciousness from, yeah. where, from what I remember and from what I know. Because you remember anything about yourself before you were born? No. So how do you know you lived before you were? Doesn't matter then. It does. Because if you're going to it make has, a, has no, 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 if no. you're going to make a claim as you know, as as grave as this, then you need to have some substantial evidence for that. No, but what no, is your belief on that? Wait, wait. There is. No, I don't. I personally. There's no evidence. No, no. But if you're going to say that you live, by the way, as a Muslim, you know, we actually have evidence for this from the Quran. Allah says that Allah took an oath from everyone, from every soul, and we all. Allah asked, Allah stabirabbukum. Am I not your Lord? And everyone unanimously agreed, yes. And that is what we call fitra that lives in us. That we, if the truth is brought to us, this fitra which is clouded, you'll recognize it. So when you say I don't care, it doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter if the if the matter of what happens to you is not in your hands. No, I just don't. I just don't see the relevance. So. Do you, did you understand what I just said? Yeah, I understood. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if the matter was in, not in your hands, you are not the judge, nor the jury, nor the executioner. So it doesn't matter. Yo, let's say you're in the court of law. Yeah. Now you are on trial. The judge, jury, and executioner is someone else. Mm -hmm. Now if they convict you for a crime and there is a punishment for that, a consequence, yeah. then it does matter, right? Of course. Good. So it does matter if what happens to you after life is. Like God, if God actually was just, then He wouldn't just let some, you know, mass murderer go to free, because normally for murder, the worst punishment in this world is what? Capital punishment, right? You die. But that's surely that's enough punishment for committing such an act. Yeah. Why does he need to be punished for eternity? What What I'm saying is that if he had killed, like for example Hitler, millions of victims, one death, you think is is that fair? No. I'm, uh, saying, I'm going to indulge with you. I'm going to talk regardless, galaxies. Regardless of that, yeah. I'm saying that Hitler got what he came for. Got what no, came but for. what I'm saying is that do you think that's fair? All these victims. How it's not fair, but reality is not fair, so my friend. I'm asking you how, will you, how will you get them? How will you get all these victims justice? Okay, are you assuming that equality exists in this world? Say again? Are you assuming that there's justice in this world? Hitler became it depends. It depends where. It depends justice. where. Because it depends. There are many places there's no equality, like in Gaza. Do you think there's equality in Gaza? No, there isn't. So there isn't. So yeah. the Why do so, Christians always interject? I don't know. But I don't know. So there is no, there is no, there is no don't they know they're not wanted sometimes? They should get the message. But the, uh, yeah. I'm saying that, so you admit that there's no equality and no... no uh, in this dunya, look, look. You know equality, in this dunya you will not find because what are you expecting? You're expecting Jannah over here. Jannah is not here. Jannah is up there. So there's a difference between this place where you find a lot of atrocities, a lot of inequality, a lot of good as well, and a lot of bad. There's all there's a mixture. Exactly. So this this world for us is a test. What what defines you as an individual as to what will happen to you in the akhirah? Yes, it's not just being a good person because being a good person and rejecting God that is the biggest sin. I know. Do you know that shirk is the biggest sin? So even if you are following a good Let's say whatever. Allah will give you the uh, the uh, ajr for that, the reward for that in dunya for you. You know, in whatever way he's, he sees fit. Because Allah says that he's not unjust. And Allah is not unjust in any shape, way or form. Okay, so when you say that is there equality? No, there isn't. There are many places where there is no equality. So there, there is no equality between, although Hitler killed six million Jews, yeah. he still dies. But that's what I'm saying. Just that for him, how would, what about the victims? How will they get justice, according to you? That's, that's because life, what, just let it go? No, no, that's because life is not fair. What, what's, what but happens? God is fair. No, that, yes. I'm saying that none of it's fair. Because that's what I'm telling you, Alexei. God is fair and that's the reason. There are some that's people, there are some people who deserve eternal hell. 
Okay? But that is an assumption. It's not an assumption. It's What's an assumption? The whole, I mean, God is an assumption. Why is it an assumption? Because it's not, there, there is no empirical evidence for it. So why do you need, wait, wait. Why do, why do you need empirical evidence for someone who's not physical? That's my point. So you're looking, are you saying, are you saying empirical evidence is the only form of evidence? No. Okay, what's the empirical evidence you have a consciousness? Consciousness? Yeah. No, that's what, I'm, that's what I mean. Is that, is but do you have consciousness? Yes. So you accept things without empirical evidence? Yes. But there you I'm go. Saying, I'm accept saying, Allah then. No, no, no. You, you, <laughs> yeah, can't, you, you, can't, you, you can't extend it all the way there. First. That's one place that Christian will agree with me. <laughs> you, can't, you can't extend it all the way there. Because Why not? God, no, because it's an okay. assumption. Okay, let me, let, it's something that we, do, we know that we have. Okay, Alexei, let we me... We acknowledge that we have it. No, no, no. It's, it? it's a subjective yeah. knowledge. Yes, yeah. but we know... Yeah. You're thirsty. Thank you, thank you. Keep it for I'm fasting. <laughs> <laughs> but thank we you. Know, we know that we have consciousness, yeah, sure. don't we? we? We're having this conversation. No, but that's right a subjective, that's no, no, a subjective no, we, analysis. We know, that we know that it exists. We, are, we know that we are different but from the animals. Alexei, that's the difference. We're different no, the no, the animals are conscious. Yeah, but not in the same way that we... Yeah, they're not rational, but they're conscious. Yeah, Okay. the same way... But you see, everyone's consciousness is based on subjective evidence yeah, rather than ra so. yeah subjective understanding not empirical evidence which you're claiming for God why would you ask empirical evidence when science doesn't deal with metaphysical at least not the naturalistic science natural yeah naturalistic science doesn't deal with yeah. because empirical evidence comes from naturalistic science not from philosophy only. okay so what I'm asking is that why is why are you asking or demanding evidence which is kind of beyond the scope of science in this case god no i, I would i would put that I, I i don't make the claim just purely on empirical evidence you demanded I mean, no, empirical no, no. evidence I, I, that's part of it i'm saying so what kind of evidence philosophical will evidence. okay Philo philosophically because, where, because metaphysics like you said doesn't yeah. exist in science it exists in the philo in the in the philosophical realm right. but so even philosophy philosophically, no philosophically it makes no sense even philosophically what god doesn't yeah. make sense there are many philosophers who believe in god what do you mean doesn't make sense no, I, I i i make that claim to you i think philosophically god doesn't no make you're not the you're not the father of philosophy no i'm not but so you're you're just one individual who appeals to philosophy yeah. okay so philosophically where did the universe come from i think it was always there where's the evidence for that why is that philosophically I'll viable? Tell you, I'll tell you what the evidence is. About. Yeah, go on. When you look at the expansion of the universe, yeah. and you look at what it's expanding into, it's not expanding into empty space. It's not from Tiring Bro. That doesn't, that doesn't exist. It's not expanding into it. It's expanding intrinsically. Empty, empty space would be the universe. No, it's expanding, in a, it's, it's expanding from itself. What do you mean from it's itself? It's so large, it's intrinsic expansion. So imagine, intrinsic. so imagine a balloon is this small. If it expands, Okay, is it expanding in itself or outside itself? That's what I mean. This logic, what you're applying to a balloon, does not apply to the, the boundaries, the, the, edge, the horizon, Why? the edge of the universe. Why does it not apply? Because that's, science works differently. No, but you're, you're claiming gravity, philosophy. Gravity, wait, wait. Gravity. What, you're saying, what you're saying is not science-based, it's philosophically based. Yes, you know that? Yes, but it's So don't try to mix the two. It's a combination. I Once think. again, what is the universe? Where did it come from? Even if it's expanding, listen. Where, where did it come from? I think it was always here. Where is the evidence for that? From the notion of infinity, from the notion, like I said, its expansion is not expanding into because if if it wasn't always there, if it wasn't always there, then it, the universe would be expanding into empty space. No, but we are not about, I'm asking where did it come from? You're going into its expansion already. Yes, because it's linked. I'm asking to that. where did it come from, and what is the evidence for that? I'm saying you're saying it's always there. Our universe, for example, what I'm saying our universe right now yeah. came from what we speculate to be the Big Bang. No, the Big Bang is not speculation; it's a theory. It's a theory. Exactly. And so it's not a speculation. Slash speculation. No, no, no. Theory. A speculation would be something like a mathematical model, which is uh, an opinion. So a hypothesis would be speculation, yeah. but not a theory. Okay. Okay. A theory needs to be disproven. Until then, it remains a theory. Yeah, it's a theory. Okay. But, uh, because you're, you're kind of mixing everything up, no, 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 Alexi, to be fair. I'm right. saying that I, 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 meant, I meant what you said, I meant theory. But I'm saying that before, like, if we say that, what if there was something before the Big Bang? No, but that's a what if. Yeah. And but you, no, no, and that's called a speculation, by the way. And science is, and science is when you just say what if, it's a question. You don't have an answer to it. That. No, science never confirmed there was a universe before us. Or, or ex another universe existed before. Never. In fact, it's, it's in fact, they, they, they used this. They use science to disprove that. They said because of entropy, that is impossible. I, I, I think. Do you know why it's impossible because of entropy? Why? What is entropy? Do you know? Okay. So entropy is some. You know, like energy which becomes useless at, at a point. Okay. So it, there's no way for the universe to keep expanding 
collapsing, expanding, collapsing, because ultimately run out of energy when it becomes unusable. That's the second law of thermodynamics. So scientists use this for people like you who claim there was an eternal, uh, sorry, the, the universe is eternal. I've just told you. What is it? I just told you, log scientifically it's impossible. It's impossible for there to be something before? Something before the universe. No, there was a universe before the universe. We don't know that fully. We don't, we don't have full knowledge on, on this thing. And I'm saying that I don't base my beliefs on something that like humanity, humanity still has little knowledge of. Actually, you're basing your beliefs on speculations. No, but you're, you don't, you're basing your beliefs I've, on I've, I've told you why the scientists disproved for speculations now. what you're making. So you, this, you know, this um, in future you're going to have is impossible because no one is going to go beyond the universe and see what exactly happened, is it? So what are you going to do? You're going to use inference. You're going to use science. You're going to see what's in our universe and you're going to postulate theories based on that. And based, you know, the Big Bang theory is the most accepted theory, uh, accepted model for the existence of the universe. Yes. So what you're saying about an eternal universe is not something which is, which is even accepted by the cosmologists. No, it is. It is. It's, it's it accepted is. as a model, yes. which is a hypothesis, yes, which is an opinion. It's beginning to get accepted. No, it's just an opinion, my no, friend. But, but my friend, it's not. It's not even reached the stage of a theory, listen, listen. like the if Big you, Bang. If you, if you stick, if you're dogmatic about like scientific beliefs in this regard, you're, I'm not dogmatic. No, I'm no, just saying what they're but, saying. But no, I'm saying there are lots of scientists right now. Yeah. There are a lot that could, uh, are starting to believe. Why do you think that most Dawa guys in this park have swapped from the cosmological argument to the contingent argument? No, they haven't swapped. They're still using it. No, no. The cosmological? Yeah. Then why is Mohammed... Sorry, the cosmological argument meaning the KCA? The, the, Kalama, the Kalama argument? Is that what you're talking about? No, so there was the, the cosmological argument which was initially... What was the cosmological was, argument? What you're saying, that we couldn't have come with... There, there needs to be a point where there needs to you be... You mean the contingency argument? No, no. Contingency is different because contingency doesn't require it to, uh, to go back to a single point. Mm -hmm. The cosmological argument requires for you to make a point based on something, which was the Big Bang. So yeah, the argument is that we couldn't have been... Like, that we couldn't have... Something couldn't have existed before the Big Bang. Therefore, something had to have caused the Big Bang. Therefore, that is God. No, no. What you're saying... Uncaused cause. Your argument... Uncaused cause. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it is. That's contingency. No, no. That's cosmological. Okay. Contingency... But what you're saying is something which is that the universe is eternal. You have no evidence at all for that I'm to support. If you, if you, if you yeah. look at the scientists and what they're beginning to say, I'm not saying it's... It, I, I actually gave you scientists. No, 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 I know. You, get, you gave me the entropy well, but I'm you, you heard of Alexander Vilenkin? Huh? Alexander Vilenkin? Vilenkin. Yeah, he, he actually used this argument about entropy and even about um, uh, even the B, uh, BGV uh, theory. All this, you know, they all tell you that this is something that the scientists have come to an agreement, the cosmologists, majority of them, come to the agreement that that couldn't have been a sustainable universe if it was just something eternal. It couldn't, be, it couldn't be possible. So anyone who makes this claim is from speculations, it's not based on either philosophy, even philosophically, for you to say that something which is the universe and it just creates everything without having a will, yes? In order, for example, not you... Sorry? Doesn't need to, doesn't okay, need so to. how did something which is just atoms and molecules have consciousness? That's the whole beauty of science, we don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> so, That's saying I don't know is a beauty. No, 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 why is, that, why is that not? Because if you dogmatically stick to something, if you dogmatically assert, assert and then other evidence comes along, you're going to put no, yourself into a, different, a difficult situation. There's a difference between sticking to dogmatically and, you know, investigating something from logic and rationality. Yeah. As humans, we are logical and rational. Of course. Okay, so for you to say that atoms and molecules one day just had consciousness, it's absurd. It's, not, it's neither logical nor, nor rational. You're just making assertions here. There's no evidence for it. I'm saying, no, 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 I'm saying that we, like, we are, very, we, don't, we, we, are, we are just beginning to understand the human brain. We're just beginning to understand human consciousness. Yeah. And ultimately, I believe that... You know all the scientists believe in consciousness without empirical evidence? 
without objective. We, we, we believe we're not scientific. That's what I'm saying, it's subjective. This is not scientific, but, by no, the no, way. But we, we, we use this, subjective to decipher yeah, scientific facts. Yeah, but scientists don't use subjective what do you think, what uh, experiences to come to a conclusion. But, they use objective of course, of course. or empirical evidences. Now, for them to make this exception for the consciousness, yeah, because it's the heart problem of consciousness, it is out of desperation and necessity. Because they have no other alternative, they have to accept it. But that's because, because these very questions you're asking, the very questions they are asking, and the very responses and solutions they're finding to it, is all rooted in consciousness. So the most basic fundamental thing for every human being, they don't have evidence for. Okay? But yet they have to accept it and believe it. Yes? Just like you would say that some people who are thieves, they believe in God. Okay? So these scientists are no different. When it comes to themselves, they accept it without any evidence. But when it comes to God, like the way you said, give me empirical evidence. When empirical evidence doesn't even apply to God Almighty, who is not a physical being, okay, who's from the metaphysical, is from beyond, no, beyond our understanding. Allah says in the Quran, it's, 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 it's He's unlike anything. I, 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 even, I, don't, like, I, don't even, I don't even like this point about empirical evidence, because I don't think you even need empirical, like, for you, I don't think you even considered empirical evidence when you believed. Like, when you, when you chose to, be, I mean, were you a revert or were you... Or, I was, alhamdulillah, Muslim. My parents yeah, are Muslim, like, my grandparents so Muslim. So, did you ever question it? What? Islam. I did, yeah. Did you question it? Yes, the yes. In fact, not only question Islam, I looked into other religions as well and investigated it. And Islam, it always brought me back to Islam because of its message which is simple, to the point, even about Almighty God, you know, we don't like, we are not like the Hindus where we create idols. When we have never seen God, you know, creating a form similar to the Christian become a son of God, none of that. Our understanding of God Almighty is something which is natural, that He is beyond our understanding. And that is, you, you couldn't get even more any simpler than that, you know? You see, like, like, it's, it's not a question of we belief, it's not a question of empirical evidence. Really. What is it then? It's a question of, youth, of a feeling, of that, a belief. So that's, a, that's the reason, my first question to I you... Think, I think what it is, is the intellectualization yeah. of like, what, 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 what for me, what I think Fitra is, is the intellectualization of things that we don't know. Is the roman romanticization of this huge gap that we have between reality and true understanding? We will never know and any, you, everything. And then, and then you, you get you, you arrive at this point called fitra, yeah. and you fall in love with it. No, I think you're using the fitra wrong way. Like I said, fitra but is fitra is a natural inclination to fi believe in fitra God. is your natural inclination to believe in what kind of God? In a believe in an omniscience, on omnipotent, whatever. Yes. But I'm saying that 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 inner feeling yeah. comes from an intellectualization between the gap between reality and what is out there actually. Like no, your, it's not, own, it's not God of the gaps, is that what, you, is that what you're trying to imply? It's not that. Reality and because reality. when we see everything, you know, has a purpose and has a starting point. Everything that's, that you see around you has a starting point. How can you say all of a sudden the universe is something which is eternal, yes, without any evidence for that? You see why the same doesn't apply to God Almighty? Because God actually has a will, unlike the universe, to do things, to plan things, to create things, to, uh, to, to uh, give justice, to give punishment, to give reward, all these things. And that's the reason my first question to you was, have you ever thought about what would happen to you after death? And you said, it I doesn't matter. It, of course. Yeah, no, I but, but for you, I, I was surprised when you said it doesn't matter. Because the thing is, if all of this is real, the akhirah, you know, the day of judgment, the punishment in the grave, the reward, all of this, if it was real, then where would you stand? Are you not taking a huge risk? You know, for someone, for someone who is who is actually looked into things, have, has questioned things, has read books, you know, has has actually spent time in accumulating data and knowledge. Of course. Then for you to say it doesn't matter, I was a bit surprised, you know, because no. I thought you'll give me some philosophical answer, maybe at least, you know, but I was a bit disappointed with your answer. No, because I don't think it does matter. Ultimately. It doesn't like because there's a quote by. Bert so you're before. saying if so you're saying if God was real, Pascal's yes, wager. it doesn't matter. Pascal's wager. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Pascal's wager. He's heard of it. Before. No, no. Pascal's wager only works if there's only one religion. No, it doesn't. It does. It doesn't. Because Pascal's wager was conceived by Pascal, Pascal who, only, who only knew of Yeah, but Pascal's wager is not the end of it. Yeah. Pascal's wager is a tool for you to, to understand 
that you're taking a huge risk. But what, now, if I'm that's not the end of yeah, it. Yeah, okay, let's say, let's say this. Right? Yeah. If Islam is true, and I'm a Christian, and then I do the Pascal's wager, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm going to believe, and then Islam is true, I go to hell. No, but that's one thing. It doesn't end at Pascal's wager. So Pascal wager, which is which says that if there was God, yes, yeah. then you're taking know, you're taking advantage. a massive risk it's an advantage because if there was if, yeah if, the, if there was no God okay, and there is no uh, hellfire and there is no you know punishment of the grave, then neither you nor I lost out. Okay, but, but if there was God and all of this was true. Then you're taking a huge risk. No, now, now the next question. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming to that. Let me, let me, let me yeah, go. Even if Pascal's wager is true, yeah. is it not true that Allah has already willed for what? what no, no, you're, you're, you're going to cut that already. Wait, wait, Let's wait, do one wait, thing wait, at a time. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm, just, I'm making a point. If Pascal's wager is true, yeah. is it not also true that Allah has already willed where your soul will go after you after you die before you before you're born? Okay, I'll come to that. But you need to understand one thing. Pascal's wager, like I said, is just a tool. To make you think and ponder. Of course. Okay? Of course. That's all it is. It doesn't mean it's going to prove for you the Akhirah. No, 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 or or anything like that. <laughs> Honestly, it's but, uh, has okay. Allah not already willed it. What's happened? Okay, so now now the question with regards to the many religions which you talked about earlier, I want to make that point as well. For you, you know, the whatever life you have been given in this world, yes, is for you to investigate. Of course. And for you to find out. Now, if I was someone who was thinking rationally how would I go about you know there are thousands of religions there's no my entire life I would be able to investigate all of them how would you narrow it down how would you shortlist it shortlist the religions yes. that are most likely to be true yeah I just don't think any of them are true. I, I don't think any of them I think they all it's, 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 it's very useful that they all originated why is, why is mine for an attitude it's, uh, it's very useful that they all originated a long time ago what was that? It's very useful that a lot of the religions are very old. Trolls. Yeah. Look, they came, from, if you're, they came from a different time of human understanding. Yeah. In fact, majority of the world believes in God. So you're amongst the minority, my friend. Yeah. So well, what is natural? What, it shows that it's natural to believe in God. Okay. It's, there are, people have conducted experiments. And I think Brother Abbas and um, I don't know if they spoke to you about that, these experiments. And you have been through that. So it's, it's only natural to believe in God. And this is the majority of the world. Okay, so going back to your question about the Qadr, okay, so if Allah has, Allah has knowledge because time doesn't apply to Allah, does it? The past, present, future, all these things doesn't apply to Allah. Yeah. So Allah knows about everyone and everything. Yeah. So okay, he, he, but you, he, he knows, he, and, wait, wait, but you, no, no, it's not, it's not hard determination. But it's, uh, it's, it's soft determination, it's not hard determination. Why was Muhammad even questioning whether he's going to go to heaven? Because Muhammad was someone who was humble. He didn't want to have that, uh, uh, to, to be complacent. He didn't want to be complacent in saying, I'm going there. But Allah confirms and puts his doubts aside by confirming that he's going to Jannah yeah. while he was on earth. This is in Surah Al-Kawthar. When Allah says, Inna atayna al -Kawthar. So this is one of the fountains in the paradise. We shall be rewarded to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the only people who get rewards in Jannah are obviously the ones who go to paradise, the, go to Jannah. Okay, okay. so coming back to this, yes, it is something which Allah knows, but you and I don't know. So for you and I to go either to Jannah or to Jahannam is our deeds. Okay, it is not because someone has made a decision that you'll definitely go here or there. It is your deeds that take you to Jannah or Jahannam. It is not something that you're thinking as hard determined. Yeah, okay. okay. Does that answer the question? Does, yeah. Okay, good. So now you keep saying that it doesn't matter. The Akhirah does matter. Okay. Because what you're looking at, you're looking at only one side, one side at uh, one side of Pascal's wager, as, as I would I would say now. You're not looking at the other side. If there was no of, uh, life after that, if there was no punishment of the grave, there was no Jahannam, if there was no Jannah, yes. And if there's no God, yeah. then you would be saying, yes, it doesn't matter. Because then for you and me, it doesn't matter. We become dust and that's the end of us, that's right? It. That's it. But now you're not looking at the other side of the coin, the if other there, side of... If there was a, if yes. there was a chance there was God. Yes. Yeah. So what would you do in that case? Then I'll burn for the rest of eternity. And, and you're okay with... Take, 
Okay. Are you okay it's, with that it's risk? It's not a question of 50-50 also. It's not either this or that. The assumption that it is this or that. In, in the Pascal's wager it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the <laughs> assumption. It's the assumption that that is the case. What, what is the, so what is the problem? Um, this problem is I'm asking... I'm assuming that there is a 50-50. I either, I either go to like heaven or I go to us. So what, other, what is the other middle part? Yeah, what's the, what's the other possibility? <laughs> what's the other part? What's the other alternative? I don't know what the other thing is, but I'm saying that there, there is, within the like religion, there is the assumption it's either this or it's either that. So but we, in reality, we don't know. So isn't it why? But I don't know. It's not an answer. It doesn't. It doesn't solve your problem. Right? Isn't it right to accept the proposal until you have better knowledge? I, I, I believe that I, like, I don't believe in God fundamentally. So I don't. The Pascal's wager just, uh, just, just, it just does not appeal to me. It does not appeal to the emotional aspect, the rational aspect. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It does make sense. It you, makes it, sense to you. No, no, no. You, when I asked you, you actually answered this question because it made sense to you. And you I'm did. Saying, saying you, you, you said, I will burn. That is what you said. That was your answer. Yeah, yeah. So you, does, you, did, you do understand. To you, to your, your not problem. me. I'm not Pascal, man. No, no, no. You're proposing it. By the way, the, this gentleman brought in the Pascal's yeah, wager. But it was a good. So, it's if, if there, if it's a tool, truth, like I said. If that's the truth, then I'm gonna burn forever. Yeah, it's but are you willing to take as a as a person who would use in this dunya? Would you take great risk, just like that? You wouldn't. You would try to. If you were an intelligent person, you would try to minimize the risk. But when you're saying let me burn, you're you're basically now reckless. No, no, no. By saying let me burn. The assumption is that you're gonna burn. No, the assumption there is a possibility until you breathe your last that, that to is, save yourself. No, no, that's the the the, the, uh, the assumption only works if the religion is true. Yes, so that's so why I'm investigate saying, the religion I'm, I'm, I'm after that. The so after the Pascal's wager, investigate the religion. That's the next step. Pascal's wager is not the end of it. Okay, okay. Okay. Let me ask you another question. Now I asked you about shortlisting. I don't think you answered that okay, question. Yeah, how would you shortlist? Um, Christianity, like I, I like, I like definitely I like aspects of it. And I mean, for me, I, like it all came from Jude. Like if you want, I'll secular, I'm secular. Yeah. Like, so I don't, I don't believe in the Quran, the Torah, in the Bible, whatever. But what, what, from what, how I see it. Mm -hmm. You know, there was the law of Moses. Moses came along, Abraham. Abraham then, was before Moses. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, Jesus Christ comes, and Christianity is effectively a reformation of Judaism. It's reforming the ideals of Judaism by it's splintered. egalitarianizing it. It's splintered. What? It's splintered from Judaism. Yeah, but it's it's the reformation of it. Because it's the... There it's the, not really, because there are two different religions in a way. They are, they are, but you know, I'm but saying it from my angle. Yeah. If you look at it, because you look at the Old Testament and you look at the New Testament, the God of the Old Testament is far more brutal than the God of the New Testament, which is now by Christians. Have you read Revelation? <laughs> but uh, in general, he is. He's, well, do I, he, 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 but he but, but, just, but he's the same God for the Christians. I know, I know. But the <laughs> so what do you mean God, God of the Old Testament and God of the New the Testament? It's the same God. Yes, but it's Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, but, Je Je loving, like, but Jesus Christ is also the same God. I know, I know. So it's not a different God. So as a secular, you should understand that you're not talking about two different. You're talking about two different religions, but one God. From the perspective of a Christian. No, from, exactly. Perspective from, from the perspective of me. No, but you're brought in Christianity. That's what I'm telling I'm you. I'm saying that from, from the perspective right. of myself. Yeah. There is a democratization process. Firstly, by how easy it is, how it's much easier to become a Christian than it is to become a Jew. It, it, it's a religion for more people than than Judaism is. Christianity. And then comes Islam, which in my opinion was devised by ultimately by Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> well, it was from Allah. Same power. Again, the same God. If you have no religion, why does your shortlisting start with Christianity? It starts with Judaism. Why does it start there? Because that's the first Abrahamic religion. No, but, so you no, but what about the religion of Abraham? What about the religion of Abraham? You missed that out. The most important bit. The, the religion before Moses. Yeah. yeah who, who, Abraham wasn't a Jew, you know that. Yeah, yeah, he was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Yeah. What was he? He was Canaanite. He was a Muslim. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you know why? Yes, because he's... Do you know why? Yeah, but Islam is much more than just a submission. No, but that's what it starts as the first kalima. That's the that's the core of Islam. Yes. Of course it's for you, for, there for are five pillars of Islam. Yeah, I know. The first pillar is what? The belief in the one, one God. Absolutely, that's submission to that one yes. God. So the first pillar starts with that. So that's why I'm saying the religion of Abraham. That's the reason they are called Abrahamic religion, Abrahamic faith. Yeah. By the way, notice I didn't say religions. 
Because for me, it's one religion. Yeah. It's being devised, uh, or divided into different uh, uh, interpretations of the original religion of Abraham. Okay? And if we go even further than that, we go to Adam. Adam being the first man. Okay? Now we're going into religion, obviously, because we're discussing religion. But anyway, the short answer to shortlisting is start with monotheistic religions. Monotheistic? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I don't really, I don't have a... If you were, if you were, a, per, if you were a person who, who was to investigate religions, would you ever consider God to be more than one entity? More than one entity? Yeah. Maybe. Why? Where where w would they both be God then? No, no, but Hashem, listen, if I was born in a deeply Hindu state, yeah. and I knew nothing apart from the fact that Hinduism was my reality, then I would believe that. Believe what? That believe that, that there was many gods. Was like, how many Do you know the Hindus actually they themselves say... Gods. No, no, the Hindus themselves say that they believe in one God. These different aspects of God are just aspects. It's like the Christian saying. The Christians have limited to three, the Hindus to 30, 330 million. Yeah, the Christians would argue that there's only one. Exactly, just like them, the Hindus. The Hindus also say there's only one God. But there are different avatars of God, there are different aspects of God. But this is all back to Brahman, which they call universal but, consciousness. Uh, for example, Zoroastrianism yeah. believes in two gods. Exactly, yeah. That's why I'm so, asking you, which one would appeal to you as someone who use logic and rationality when you come to investigate things? I, I, Do I you see problem? No, no, no. I would, I would, I would say if there was one, if there was God, yeah. he would be omniscient, and he would be, he would be wise. Now I'm asking entities. How many entities would he? Would he be one or no, no, one, one omniscient entity? Okay. So when you say one, okay, that means that would rule out people who are polytheistic. Yeah. Would you agree? So anyone who says more than one God, then you'll rule that out. Yeah, but I would rule everyone out. This, I don't like this line of questioning. It's not a. I'd rule all of them out. I don't, I don't form a table of values, no, no, I, hierarchy I mean, values. In terms the, of no, no. The, the reason I'm asking you this question: uh, polytheism versus monotheism. Yeah. Which one makes more sense? Monotheism. Why? Why is that? Because I think if there was a god, it would be one omniscient entity. Yeah. There would he would have. It's the attribute of science. He would have one will. Yeah. yeah. If, that was if the, if I if I were to believe in one, because that would that would make sense as to the metaphysical nature of an entity that can create the world and influence it and. Yeah. Because one. Design it. Yeah. One, one will is something which is quite significant in that response. I would say the reason for that is because if you had two gods. Or if you had two, let's say, equal uh, entities, yeah. and even though if you call them one, like our Christian friends here, they would say that the Trinity is one God. But then if you ask them the question, if let's say Jesus wants to, uh, I don't know, lift the, lift the feather up to here, and God the Father wants to lift the feather up to here, would they be able to do? I, know, I don't know much about Christianity, but I know that there's one divine will. So Jesus would not go against the Father in that case. Actually, Jesus does. Yeah, but... Jesus does. He does, he might do, but ultimately I believe that he... There is one divine will. Because the will, the, will of, the will of God in the Bible was for Jesus to go and die on the cross. But he literally prays to God to save him from that. Yeah, yeah. So he was in a way trying to say, show me another way. Okay? Or give me another alternative. So that is not, that is not, and, and Jesus literally says in that, let it be your will be done, not mine. Christians do believe that, they, that Jesus has a divine and he has a human nature. So yeah. that, what, I, what I would say that is, is no, but I'm nature, saying, I'm human saying, nature pouring out. No, I'm saying with the divine natures of Jesus and the Father, if they are in sync, then the question arises that they can't be independent. The reason is, if God... They can't be independent. Exactly, if God, but God is independent. In rationally, general, rationally, general, logically, general. God is independent. Yes, I know, I know. God I cannot be dependent on, on different uh, pieces or different uh, parts. Okay? He's independent. He's independent. Of yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that they cannot be God, equally God, because then, according to the Christian theology, one person cannot go against the other person's will. They both have to lift the books at the same height, yeah. or they both have to drop it at the same height. But they cannot do something independently. See what I mean? Yeah. And that's where it doesn't make sense. So even if the Christians or even if the Hindus say that they are all aspects of one God, but when you actually break it down, logically, it doesn't make sense. Because even within Hinduism, you see different gods competing with each other yeah, I know, I as know. to who's superior. You know, there was once a competition between uh, this 
create a god of Hindus called Brahma uh, and uh, the uh, and, and uh, Vishnu. So Vishnu was they had that competition who's superior. Then Shiva comes in the middle, tries to decide between them that I will decide who is superior from you. If you so he basically you know has this um, pillar of fire or something. Yes, or I don't know, linga, whatever they call it. And he says that whoever finds the end of it, yes, will be the winner, will be the most superior. So Brahma goes up, he becomes yeah, some yeah, creature, and then Vishnu becomes Vishnu becomes a wild boar. Yeah. And he become and they both try go and try to look for the end of the pillar. Actually none of them find it, but Brahma comes and tells Shiva that he's found the the end. And Shiva knew he was lying and he cursed him right there and then. So you see, this is a competition between gods. Yeah. And that's the reason it's untenable to believe in. So even if the polytheists say that they believe in one god, which doesn't really make sense because they all are independent. They believe the hierarchy yes. gods. Yeah, but that, that still is polytheism. That still is polytheism. So what stands out out of this? Now you got Judaism and Islam left. Yeah. Yeah? Because now we have. In a way, shortlisted these two. Okay. With Judaism, okay, you're you're born a Jew, yeah. yeah. So you can, I think you can convert to Judaism. You can. It's yeah, hard. yeah, you can, but it's, it's they have to have a different a set of rules and all that. Order. Yeah, it's not as simple as Shah Shahada. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> Islam is much easier. So they got much much more difficult, and it, because of this tribalism, yes, it makes it in a way exclusive, and that's the reason most of the world has rejected Judaism. Most of the world has rejected Judaism. Judaism. Most of the world has rejected Hinduism. You, 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 you could have always convert to it. Yeah. But let me just finish this. Okay, okay, finish let this. let yeah. me just finish this. What I'm saying is, then you are just left with Islam. Now Islam. Wait, wait, wait. Across. Yeah, you, you. You made it. You, made it. Okay, okay. you, you can respond. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm saying. Yeah. So Judaism. You know, by the way, when you ask a Jew what will happen to you after 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 that, they don't know the answer. So they just say, I don't know, because in the books it is not clear. It's not specific, and there are many things in there. No Bible, I think there is some clarity compared to the compared to Judaism. And you weren't also. No, no, they have the Lake of Fire and all that. You always able to convert to Judaism. Like back in, like way back. Yeah. It's only like it's only exactly. And and Judaism is based on the scriptures, isn't it? And the race and your race. Yeah, and the race, but the scripture itself, there is a. A huge gap between Moses and the earliest extant uh, Tanakh. Yeah, that okay, was, that was massive gap. you got like a 1400 year of gap. Yeah. Now, there's no way you can say that Moses preached this with such a gap. Yeah. But in Islam, Alhamdulillah, we have the Quran in the original language from the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Islam. It goes beyond all boundaries, doesn't matter which color, what background, what culture you come from, it welcomes everyone. Alhamdulillah, Islam is the fastest growing religion because of this universal uh, aspect to it. Would you argue it's that universal though? Why it's not? Because what is the holy what is the holy message of Islam? Yeah, by the way you're going to say something earlier? No, no, in case you forget. What is that? That's what I'm trying to say. What is the universal uh, message? What is the what, what is the universal um, miracle of Islam? Miracle? The, the Quran. Quran. The Quran. Yeah. How would you truly understand the Quran? Truly yeah. means if you want to understand then you have to learn the language. Yes, Arabic. Yes. So does that not does does it, anyone that doesn't know What it? does that mean? What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you cannot understand it if you translate it in other languages. But your your question, no, no, your your question was qualified. You said truly understand. It. So if you truly understand, for example, if somebody truly wants to understand this conversation we're having, would they learn, would they need to know English? Of course. So so the, it applies to everything in the world, my friend. Why not? Because the Bible is not the miracle of Christianity. No, but what? Jesus Christ is. Wait a minute. And you can understand the message and many Hold on, hold on. If I told you the message is Jesus Christ. No, no, wait a minute. Watch this. If I told you the message of Christianity is Jesus Christ. That's it. It's not that. It's not just Jesus Christ. Then what? What are you going to say then? I'm saying it's the story of it. From, where does the story come from? It comes from them. But Thank you. It comes from the Bible. Yes. So you have to rely on the Bible. The and the Bible is in a particular language. It's not the, mir it's not the miracle of it. But hold on. Your miracle is a red herring here. No, I'm no, asking no, you, no. can you understand the message of the Quran as a translation? Yes, but that's not the true message. Though. How do you know it's not the true you, message? You, 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 
you would, you would no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You no, no. Arabic. No, hold on. The scholars who learn Arabic, yeah. okay, they interpret it in a language of the people who don't understand Arabic. So the scholars is the one who's going to be your gateway to understanding the Quran if your language is not Arabic. By the way, just being an Arab doesn't mean you understand the Quran. Do you know that? Okay, so this argument of yours is flawless. It's something which is flawed. I'm saying regardless, that does, that does still create a scenario. It doesn't create any scenario, my friend. This is, this is a red herring the Christians bring in and it's something which is so flawed that they themselves have to rely, they, they themselves will be actually uh, going against their own Bible if they use this as an excuse. Because the Bible, what was the original language of Jesus? Aramaic. Aramaic. Do you know any, Bi do you know, do you know any Bibles from the time of Jesus in Aramaic? Do you know any from 200 years in Aramaic? Do you know 400 years? Exactly. So this Aramaic language itself was lost. Hence, lost in translation. There you go. So the Christians will be the first ones to have this problem of language if they try to use it against the Muslims. You see the Muslims, one thing you need to understand is this. For us, the language is a strength, okay? You call it miracle, but I think it's the strength of Islam. You know why? Because no matter what anyone in the world interprets, including Arabs, including Arabs, we can always fall back on the original language of the Quran and the message of the Quran. No other, lang no other religion in the world can say this with certainty and with confidence. Not the Bhagavad Gita, not the Vedas, okay? Not the Bible, not the Torah. None of them can say this with confidence because at some point their languages were lost. Okay? The Hindus tell us the Vedas are like millions of years ago. Some of them go to the extent of saying Ram is from, from the th uh, Treta Yuk. You know when that was? The Ice Age. 2.1 million years ago. What language, what language did Valmiki write it in? Ramayana. Okay? So it's all absurd. For us, the language is the strength, Alhamdulillah. You know? That's why Allah says in the Quran that is revealed it in Arabic. You know why it was revealed in Arabic? Because the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was living with the Arabs. The message came to him who was an Arab and he would be able to explain it to them in Arabic. Okay? It wouldn't come to him in Chinese or in some other language. But if he, if the Prophet was Chinese, then it would come to him in that language. You see? Because Allah also says in the Quran that he has sent me uh, messengers to all the nations. Yes? Which is the, the only understanding from that is that those messages must have been said in the language of that nation isn't it but language everyone has the ability to learn no, no, of course yeah but that, i would make the, then you could say everyone yeah. fundamentally has the ability to in, in fact most muslims are non arabs 20% yeah. only Arabs. In fact, even less than that. No, 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 no. Yes. So most of the Muslims are actually not Arabs, and most, in fact, most of the people who have memorized the Quran are also non Arabs. Yeah. What does that tell you? That the, Allah says in the Quran that it is easy to remember. Easy to remember, even for people whose original, whose actually native language is not Arabic. Why? You know, I've seen children as young as three years old memorize surahs of the Quran like that, you know. And I'm, I'm saying, obviously, these are not, not that many, but majority of the Muslims who memorize the Quran are non-Arabs. And for them, it's very easy. They do it in two years. Yeah, yeah, but then I could argue you could become, you could, you could become a Jew in two years. Become a Jew in what? You could become a Jew in two years. How will, if you could go through the process, that would take two years. How would you... It's, it's but how, how would you know there's a message from Moses with a gap of 1,500 years or 1,400 years? Yeah, still. You would have a huge problem even if you knew the language. Yeah, and you know what? You know what? The Jews themselves, they learned the diacritical marks from the Arabs. Yes? It was the Arabs who taught them. They didn't have a dictionary before. It was the Arabs, from once the Arabs gave them that tool of dictionaries and lexicons, that's when they started to have it. The Arabs didn't give us the Phoenicians did. No, no, about the lexicons and the dictionary. Because they are, the Phoenician language is not a language. It's, it's, it's what, uh, what, what do they call it? It's hieroglyphics, kind of like symbols. Yeah, but it came from there. I'm talking about the language, the Hebrew language that they use in the Torah. It did not have diacritical marks. And that's the reason they don't pronounce Yahweh. Yes, because it's only consonants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's yod ha wow ha. It's just consonants. They don't know whether to say Yahweh, Yehovah, Yahweh. That's the reason these Christians, they say Jehovah or Yahweh. They butcher it completely. At least the Jews respect the name of their God. They say, I don't want to mispronounce it. Because I'm going to burn in hell. I don't know if they believe in hell, but I'm going to have a bad time somewhere. Okay? You see, that is where the name of Allah by the way, many people say Allah just means the God. That would be Al-Ilah. Allah is actually a proper noun. 
and it is a name of God and there are 99 names of Allah yes they all have meanings but that doesn't mean that Allah doesn't have a name of course Allah has a name and this name of Allah is so unique the name of Allah is so unique because it's it doesn't even uh, because Allah you know gender doesn't apply to Allah yes neither does uh, whether plural doesn't apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. But you see the term God, you have God, God, Goddess, you know, all this applies. Because the Bible, the New Testament doesn't have the name of God. So it uses what? It uses Kios, it uses Father, Abba, all these things, you know, which are more like descriptive titles rather than actual name of God. The term, the term Allah is unique. You know, we, we don't have this problem with Elohim whether it applies to an angel or to a false god or to a true god. We have Allah, you know, as soon as the term Allah is there, the Christian Arabs, the, Muslim, uh, the Muslims and the Jewish Arabs will understand when you talk about Allah, it's always Almighty God. So, so I'm, I'm, my parents are Orthodox Christians. I became Muslim when I was 21. Alhamdulillah. And like all the Egyptians will understand when they say Allah. Or like everyone will understand it. It's a very unique. So Arab Christians, Christians use Allah as well. Like. Yeah, that's what I just told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that when you use the term Allah, they immediately understand it always applies to Almighty God. Yeah. But when you say the term God, it can apply to a false God. It can apply to a true God. It can even apply to human beings because the Jews themselves are called gods okay, let me ask by Jesus. Question. Sorry, by, uh, by the Old Testament. No, no, no. But is, is Muhammad Salah, Salah. is Muhammad more than a man? He's a man. He's a man. Yeah. He's fully a man. He's fully a man. He's the best of creation. He's no. the best of creation. Yes. So is he a full of special privileges? Well, he's a special man. Yeah. You can say he's a special man. Yeah. So by the way, you know we say the prophets had special abilities. abilities. So they all they all had. For example, they had abilities to do miracles. Is that abilities like Moses. or is that privileges? Are okay. Not all equal in the eyes of Allah. No, 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 no. In fact, there are certain prophets who have greater status than the other prophets. But in terms of them being prophets, they're all equal. We don't distinguish between them okay. that this is well, someone who is... Also, with, with yeah. extra privilege comes extra responsibility. Yes. yes like, you, know, like, you can call it privilege if you want, no problem. Because, you see, they represent Allah on earth. And because when somebody is a prophet and a messenger of God, and they come and tell you, I'm a prophet messenger of God, first thing you're going to say, what's your proof? Yeah. Like Alexia, give me empirical proof. <laughs> you see, so the miracle will be his empirical proof. Do you know that? And this was in the past, but after the last messenger, the Prophet peace be upon him, the Quran is a miracle. And anyone, and it applies to all time. It applies to all time. The miracles that happened uh, that were by the previous prophets were only applicable for that time to the people to whom it was as a proof, as evidence. Yes, al ayat. And what These were the signs from Allah. Just for clarification, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had to do extra prayers also that we, we yes. are not assigned. Yeah. So he had extra responsibility that came. Like the Tahajjud prayers, was, uh, for him it was mandatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tahajjud prayer, which for us is voluntary, for him it was mandatory. So there were many things that he had to go through as, as a prophet and as a messenger. He had, obviously, not only him, but all the prophets, uh, all the messengers, they were given certain miracles we should identify them in the eyes of the people that is special, okay? Yeah, and like, like Jesus. Yeah. yeah, like Jesus, like Moses. So, yeah, inshallah. So we, we believe that all of these prophets, they all had one religion. Yes, we call it Islam. It's the Arabic term. I know many people don't understand because when they say Islam, they just say, oh, it came 1400 years ago. No. Islam means submission to the will of Almighty God. But it also means following the five pillars. In, yeah, for the last Ummah, yes. Yeah. But not the, for the previous Ummah, they are different. They have different Sharia. Okay? For example, uh, the, um, during the time of Jesus, you know, and Moses, they had the Ten Commandments. One of them is to maintain the Sabbath. We don't have that. So this Sharia has now abrogated, the Sharia of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has abrogated the previous ones. There might be certain similarities, like for example, fasting. We are in the month of Ramadan now. Fasting was ordained for the people before as well. Yeah. Yes? It's by the Jews and Christians. Yeah, yeah they call themselves Jews and Christians, but we, like I said, for us, they were, if they obeyed Moses during the time of Moses and they obeyed Jesus during the time of Jesus, they would be Muslims, which means they are submitting to the will of God. These names, Judaism, Christianity, they came later on because they are attached to an individual. Judaism to Judah, Christianity to Christ, okay? But you see the term Islam is not attached to any person. Even the term Muslim is not attached to any person. 
I know that. But yes. Prior to Muhammad, no one would call each other Muslim. That's why I'm saying this is an Arabic term. That's the reason I'm saying this is an Arabic term. There might be a different. No, that has no grounding. No problem. There might be a different term, which they might have used instead of Islam or Muslim, but the the core point of mine is that it is one religion. That's what I'm saying. You see, you know, like one big problem I have with Islam is Prophet Muhammad is a character himself. Yeah. He's a guy. Because he like he had so many wives. Why he like a normal Muslim is allowed to have four wives. If you're the spiritual leader of a new movement, of a new enlightened movement, yeah. why do you need so many wives? Have you have you ever read the biography of the Prophet Peace be upon him? The biography, no, I haven't. Maybe you should. Because there are a lot of questions which you ask are answered in them. Many of the times, these marriages were because of alliances. Yes? It's not the marriage of Zainab. Like I said, many. I didn't say all. Yeah. Okay? So even Zainab, the marriage of Zainab and the marriage of... Uh, was to was to give a message. What was the message in the case of Zainab? Do you remember? Yeah, because it was his, uh, what, his cousin or his, his, his relation. She was the wife of his... His what? His adopted son. His adopted son yeah. Yes. So the taboo at that time was, if somebody divorces, if somebody's adopted son divorces his wife, then she cannot be married in the same family. Yes, because when you adopted son, so he cannot marry. The father cannot marry. But, but the tab that was to break the taboo of that time, because there were many widows who would. By the way, at that time, adoption was quite common, and they and they would these women would then nobody would marry them. That's an interpretation that came after the fact. No, it didn't. What, what was it? Didn't. In fact, Allah. In fact, Allah mentions this. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he to reinforce this this injunction of being able to marry once divorce. Uh, once a wife is uh, divorced to remarry, this injunction is given in the Quran. It's not after the. It's not after the fact. No, no, but it is after the, your, your. You haven't read it, bro. Your explanation. No, no, I don't need to read it. I'm saying your explanation for it is very much after the fact. Which, which explanation? The fact that it's breaking taboo. This, this, That's in the Quran. What do you mean afterwards? But the Quran came to Muhammad for many years. Yeah. So it would have been developed over many years. I'm saying that prior to that. Was it there in the time? Was this understanding in the time of Muhammad peace be upon him or not? No, I'm saying that regardless, he came. He saw Zainab. He likes what he saw and married her. No, he didn't marry her. He didn't. He didn't marry her. Zainab. Yes, he did. Sorry, he didn't marry her because of that. How do you know? Because Allah gave the injunction. Of course Allah gave the injunction. Of course that would make sense if Muhammad for Muhammad. Of course he, he would ask he would ask a spiritual being to give him injunction to marry a woman that he likes. No, it's not, coincidentally, if, well, was but, his was his, uh, you know if that was the case, the if that was the case, the Quraysh told Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that he can have anything you want. Just do not preach about the oneness of Allah. Yes? They gave him the most beautiful women that he could have. They gave him as much wealth as he wanted. Yes. In fact, they gave him leadership. He refused all of that. Yeah, he said, wait, wait, no, no, Alexi, because that's what you of numbers yeah. in terms of the wealth, in terms of the authority. Of that's the reason they are a boycott of the Muslims in that community yes. to such an extent that nobody will sell or buy from them. Yes, they were completely boycotted. In fact, they had to starve. Many people starved. Yes. So wait, wait. So it doesn't make sense that when Muhammad peace be upon him, when he was weak, when he was among the Quraysh and he was given this offer, that if he was indeed someone who was a man after materialistic things, like women, okay, or wealth, that he would have rejected it. So go on, answer now. He was given authority as well. How many times I repeated this now? Okay, wait. How will someone who has no army, no numbers in terms of followers, how would he convince anybody of anything at that time. Jesus managed to do it. No, don't change the topic about to Jesus yeah. because Jesus himself was driven out by his own people yeah. as well. Okay? And this happened to all the prophets. All the messengers went through this hardship. So the character of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him cannot be questioned. He was upright in his understanding. You know when Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, when he died, what did he have with him? He had barely anything. He gave up everything of his. He was in debt. If he was if he, no no he wasn't uh, he, he was someone who actually could have amassed a lot of wealth. Because you know, when the Prophet, uh, at that time, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people actually became rich at that time. Yeah. Yes, because they would go to war, get a lot of booty. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a leader. He could have had it all because he would get the lion's share. 
But what would happen when the lion's share came to him? He would distribute it every time. And this was the character of the Prophet peace be upon him. So what you're saying is from knowledge which you don't have, and I don't, I don't blame you for that. But if you really want to question the character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam without reading the biography of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, then you are doing an injustice to yourself because you're not after the truth. Then, if you're after the truth. Then yeah, promise so me you're going to read the I'm biography. So that regardless of what you're saying, okay. I'm so intrigued. Are you going to read the biography and then question Muhammad? Or yeah, I'll question him all the time. I'll read the biographies after biographies and still question Okay, him. but you haven't read it yet, have but, you? No, but I've read but parts of it and I've definitely read the most important part, which, which is the fact that he had up to up to 30 wives at one stage. That 13? Divorced, 30? Yeah, the, the divorce, 13 you mean? Not 30, he didn't have 30 wives. Some, Where some, did he get that from? In total. In total. In total. No. I'm wives. talking in total. You know, he divorced some. You know, how, many, how many did he divorce? Never Bro, you haven't read the biography, no, please. No, no, he divorced the book. Of course he divorced never the book. <laughs> you don't know the biography of Prophet. 30 wives, I've never heard this before. No, no, not 30. Not, he had 12 wives at once. At one stage. Which yeah. is already three times the amount that, any, uh, that a Muslim can have. Like I told you, that I'm, for, for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the same rules don't apply even in his ibadah. They don't apply. It's very, it's very useful that they don't apply. Like I said, you haven't read the biography, so you keep saying this because what you're doing is you're just speculating now. You're just speculating. I'm telling you that if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was indeed someone who lusted after women and was greedy for wealth, he could have had it all. Why did he deny it? You didn't answer that question. No, no, because I, I, I believe he was also power. Okay, so answer me. Why did he deny power when he was given it? When he was given leadership, by the Quraysh, why did he deny it? Within the context of Quraysh beliefs and what, what, was, what, the, what, was, the what was the condition? That I he stopped about Allah. Yes. yes. So why did he deny it? Of course, because he would form his spiritual basis for power. Yeah, but he was weak that time. On this, Alexi, he was weak. Oh, so you. So, so wait, wait, wait. Let me get this right. You're telling me that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was so confident, yes, that he will have power eventually. On what basis do you have so much faith in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? You're not a Muslim, but you have so much faith that you believed in his confidence. Look what he did. This is the reason you're talking to me today. No, no. This is an afterthought from your side. But if you, what you're doing is this is called anachronistic. That's called anachronistic. Uh, in this case, at that time, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not know about the future himself. Okay, so he didn't know he was going to become a leader of all the Muslims and there would be so many, uh, what do you say, people following him eventually. Eventually, he did get the wahi for that, but at that time, he was very weak. He had hardly any followers and they were being captured and tortured to death. He was basically without anything, no wealth, no power, no authority, nothing. But he was given everything and yet he denied it. So your argument no, is wrong. No, it doesn't work because he was given everything within the context of the Quraysh. What do you mean context of the Quraysh? What does that mean? Within the context that he can't preach about the oneness of Allah. Yeah, so, so how, how, does how, that, how, does that, how does that benefit Muhammad? Because he could then formulate a religion, an ummah, based upon that very fact. Good. So what you just told me is that he was a, he was a spiritual man, not a materialistic man. Am I right? I didn't say that he was... When did I say he was materialistic? But you kept saying about the wives and all this. No, no, no. What did you mean by that's that? That's not material. That's last. No, it, it comes under materialism. No, no, no. I'm not talking, you said he gave up power, he gave, he gave up money, he gave up this, he gave up Yes, that. yes. And you said, you said in the context of the Quraysh, he was given all this, but he chose religion over all of this. No, over women, over power, over wealth. So he chose his religion, religion over no, no, everything. Because I don't believe in religion. He, he chose a lot. No, 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 he chose that to fortify his own power ultimately. Because within the Quraysh, if you think about it, if he was given all of these things, if he was given the women, he was given the money, he was given this. Under the hierarchy of the race. No, no, no. Say, he, all right. If he was given all this, yeah, yeah. yeah, he would then abide by their rules. Exactly. But he wants to create.